Okay, so the last few lectures we've been talking about constitutive models. Constitutive models are what? Relationships between what two things? Stress and strain. Right? Stress and strain. And we talked about a couple of, you know, we talked about linear elasticity. We talked about poor elasticity or the, f the effects of poor pressure uh, on, on the stress. And the, and the constitutive response of the material. And, you know, poor elastic materials are, by nature, viscoelastic materials. Uh, so we talked a little bit about that. And now we're really getting to the whole reason that we did all that stress resolution stuff was to determine if a fault would slip or a wellbore would fail. And so now we're going to get to the point where we are going to develop some understanding or some criteria um, for when faults will slip, when well boards will fail based on the strength of the rock. Okay, And so we're going to spend today and probably the next lecture as well talking about mechanisms of rock failure or models uh, of rock failure. So, you know, mathematical models that have been proposed to uh, to predict when a rock will fail. So, just real quickly, we'll conceptually go over the, the most common types of tests on rocks. Uh, you've done some of these already in the lab. You'll do more. Uh, so, the first one is a hydrostatic compression test. And so this is where the rock sample is placed in a fluid bath. Um, it's typically uh, jacketed, so it's put inside a membrane to uh, protect the, the porous rock from the fluid that you put it in. So it's usually like a hydraulic fluid, uh, kerosene mix. And so it's put in a fluid bath, and then the fluid pressure is pumped up, intensified. Okay. And so this puts an equal hydrostatic pressure or squeezes the rock uh, from all directions. And then, of course, the rock is instrumented with strain gauges uh, to measure its deformation. And so you can develop, uh, you know, volumetric stress versus compression uh, strain information. So this would be a hydrostatic compression test. So this is when all sides of the rock are squeezed equally with a hydrostatic compression, okay? typically a fluid. Uh, uniaxial compression is the one you've already done. right? Uh, this is where uh, the, the sample is placed in a load frame. Uh, it's unjacketed, so it's, you know, it's open to the air. It's placed in a load frame and squeezed from the top. Uh, until failure. And so the, the point at which the rock fails in this test is called the unconfined compressive strength of the rock. And while it's certainly the most common type of test done, it actually doesn't give us very good information about how rocks behave because in the way we use them. Because uh, in the earth, they're certainly always confined. And so you know, it does not a lot of good knowing the unconfined compressive strength of rock because you can have a material that's got a relatively uh, low unconfined compressive strength, but then you put some confinement on it, and it can be behave very very strong. <clears throat> so, this test uh, is one of the more common tests that's done and has a really unfortunate name. Uh, triaxial compression uh, because in fact uh, what's what's going on here is this, the cylinder the, the test sample is confined uh, on the sides by a fluid it's jacketed again it's confined on the sides by a fluid and then the fluid pressure is pumped up or intensified uh, to, pr to place a, a confining pressure and it's labeled here S3 Place a confining pressure along the uh, outside of the jacket, uh, jacketed cylinder, and then 
the test sample is loaded mechanically from the top. So there's really only two unique um, stresses, the mechanical loading in the S1 direction and the hydrostatic loading in the S3 direction. So the fact that we call it triaxial, I mean, it's, it's being confined on all sides, but there's only two independent loads, uh, the hydrostatic confinement and the mechanical um, loading. Okay, so this is another very common test. Uh, another test is called triaxial extension. It also has this unfortunate name, and it's also done in a strange way. Um, in the triaxial extension test, the sample is loaded hydrostatically from the sides and mechanically from the top, but at the same rate to the same pressure. In other words, um, all, it's, it's almost mimicked, it's done in a way that mimics a hydrostatic compression test. So the same load on all sides. So the sample is jacketed, put in a fluid bath, the fluid pressure is pumped up. At the same time the fluid pressure is being pumped up, squeezing the sides of the sample, the sample is mechanically loaded from the top at the same rate to the same pressure. Okay, so at some instance, before you actually start the test, then everything is in under hydrostatic confinement. That's all the all the stresses are equal to one another. Okay, and then S3 is released. So the S3, the the load that was mechanically confining the top of the sample, is released, allowing the sample to extend. Right, you compressed it. And it didn't fail because you're were, you were basically hydrostatically compressing it. You didn't exceed that failure. So you compressed it, and now you're allowing it to extend until it fails. So that's a triaxial extension test. And then there's, you know, a true triaxial test is where all three directions are loaded independently, and this would be more analogous to the conditions that we actually see in the Earth, right? We have three, in the Earth we typically have three far field stresses that are independent, that are, you know, not equal to one another necessarily. And so this would be, um, you know, a better test to do. Unfortunately, these tests are very difficult to do. Uh, the test apparatus is very complicated. It's very, very difficult, almost impossible to do these types of tests on, uh, with pore pressure, with you know controlling the pore pressure. So all of the other tests we can do, at the you know we can control the pore pressure, at the same time we're applying the external loading. Uh, and these types of tests it's very difficult. So you don't see these done a lot, although they would be the probably the best ones to have. 